Hi, my name's Adrian Dunbar, and I play Jim in Blood. Uh, my name is Sophie Petzl, and I'm the writer of Blood. And together we are the Debonairs. <laughs> no, really, and we're going to break down this particular... Uh... Scene from episode one of season two. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, go for it. Oh, he Thank will. <laughs> Paul, you're driving us home. I'm going to uh, pause it already. So, like, writing big group scenes is always tricky because you've got to kind you have to keep in mind what the intention of the scene is what the purpose of the scene is what do we have to get out of it and what are we trying to you know what are we trying to say what are we trying to do but at the same time you've got like five different people with five different if agendas. Pro- five different agendas and five different like points of view and things and there are so many secrets and everybody knows different things yes. and so you know it's a it's a, a kind of an endless process of going back and right forth and back forth. and forth and yes. trying to like to make sure you cover all yeah, the bases yeah and you'll go on set and one of the actors will rightly point out you know in episode four, I, I I already know that this is happening. Yes, so am yeah. I going to be thinking about that? And you go, oh, yes. And yeah. so there's a lot of a lot of poking and prodding to get a scene like this right. But yes, and indeed, as we shall see, when it comes to the edit, something else happens. Yeah, <laughs> it all changes anyway. <laughs> Can I get you anything? No, no, I'm Grant. Are you sure, my love? Grant, yeah. Jim. No, this looks great. Just a bit of gravy there. Yeah, that's a yeah. bit of improv. <laughs> Yeah, I love it when scenes like this sort of come alive and all the actors are like just f- filling the air and not allowing it to feel too scripted and too staid. And to new arrivals, Jim, you're welcome. Ginny Conway, one of the greats. And to old, well, to Gillian. Yeah. You are such an horse. <laughs> hey, you just keep laughing. <laughs> Won't be me, he'll be sleeping in the barn with... I'm going to stop it there because what, you know, you, what, the thing about this is that Dennis... In doing what he does now, he pushes the whole thing to a kind of different level, and which allows us then to come for the whole thing to crash. That needs someone to mm. push it to a place where we think, "Wow, this is all kind of you lovely know, and happy." And, you know, so he's, he's pushing it there, right? Here we go. And Grony is great at providing the counterpoint of just looking like she's about to explode, snoring and farting away. <laughs> Everything's so happy for now. Phone away. Yeah. The phone is very good because it's like the ticking clock of the scene. They're a bit young for phones. Well, God help you when they're not. All over after that. Didn't even know who he talks to. Hardly says a word to us in the real world, but on that thing, he's bloody James Joyce. <laughs> so I'm going to stop it there because you don't, you know, that's when you're an actor, you know, and you can see I, I'm just, you know, I'm playing within the part, I'm playing my thing, but you don't know how much the cameras of that is picking up. And then you hope when it gets to the edit that the editor might use some of those things to tell you a particular part of the story. And thankfully, <laughs> we've got a great editor as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> Finding all the great angles. <laughs> all excited about staying on at St. Catherine's. It's our first explosion in the scene. What's this? I remember saying it to you earlier about his all in hand, the fees. Oh, sh- Sorry, Paul, I thought you knew. We haven't actually discussed it yet. Nice sound oh, cue in there as well. Yeah. Just to underscore that. Tom and Jillian. Music is as good as anything else at telling you that this is a moment you have to pay attention to. So they don't have to leave at the end of term. We just... We know how much they loved it there and how sad they were to have to leave. And what's a godparent for anyway, no? <laughs> I'm not exactly leading the way in their good Catholic uh, so instruction. So context here. Uh, but at the beginning of this episode, we're kind of getting the impression there's a lot of tension between um, Fiona and her husband, Paul. And a lot of the series is trying to kind of unpack the secrets and the things that have been building up in the past. Uh, and what's brought us to this point that you find at the very beginning of episode one. This is all sort of you know, Jim kind of witnessing this for the first time and witnessing that there's there's tension in the ranks and not all is sort of as happy and as larks. Um, yes, as and he's also in possession of some information. Yeah, Jim's about to kind of drop his he, own bomb. He, he also, and so now, so the, what needs to happen now is for Ian Lloyd Anderson, <laughs> who's Paul, has to get over this particular thing and ground everything so that we feel we've got over this hump for then something else to happen. Mm-hmm. He's honestly generous of you, Tom. Well, it's a lot of money, Tom. So what are we going to do with it? Our lad's grown up now. And the animals won't do much with a private education. <laughs> God, I, I hope I haven't caused any offence. I'd never... No, you haven't. Um, 
Well, I'm grateful. It's incredibly generous. Thank you. Well, it's your pleasure. Our wonderful director, Morris Sweeney, is an expert at creating this unbearable sense of tension. Yeah, fine. And the actors are just like, tension and silence. And here's the phone again, the running gag, which <laughs> leads us to the next bit. But he's an odd bastard. It'll just be something to do with the boys, I'm sure. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, <clears throat> how well do you know those uh, lads that Owen's hanging out with? Yeah, pretty well. They're close. Owen met Kean on an apprenticeship, and then they set up their garage together. The looks between actually, Paul and Jim here are He's brilliant. Very it's always said adopted kids find those connections harder to make, so it's great he's got such good friends. Oh, yeah, good for him. Yeah, it's great. Lovely, <laughs> Lovely lad. But the reason I bring it up is that I was... Uh, thought I saw something strange going on there in the garage the last time I bumped into them, you know. I mean, it's not something I'd want to see my kids doing, that's for sure. I mean, but I know, look, we've all been kids. We've all just too into it now to say anything. <laughs> no, I just thought... I'd mention it because it's probably worth a word. So, before we get to the punchline here, what I love about this and what was what felt to be so important is so much of this series is like Jim having to adjust to his new position. Like he he's come from being a guy who could say things like this as sort of like, yeah. for want of a better word, the alpha within the community. Like he was a doctor, well well respected, and his word went. Uh, who could say, look. X thing is happening and that's really bad and everyone had to go oh yeah no yeah you're right okay we should think about that and mm. whether it made people feel awkward or not it doesn't matter but now Jim is finding that this is a moment where we find that Jim's whole um, status status has has come down a peg or two Jim why don't you let Owen and what happens in this house to myself and Gillian and you try not to bother yourself okay which is just not something you used to say yeah, to no, Jim I didn't mean to intrude or anything like that it's fine Chicken's gorgeous, <laughs> Gillian. Thank you. Chicken's gorgeous. You couldn't resist it, could you? No, you no. Couldn't resist trying it. <laughs> you know. I think it's because if I'm in an awkward situation, but, uh, that's what I do. I go, this is this is great food. You know. So uh, a lot of information in that particular mm. scene, and very enjoyable, I think, because we we love seeing people uh, in those <laughs> really embarrassing situations, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah, that kind of unbearable <laughs> sense of um, tension and. Um, and for us, like, Blood has always been a domestic thriller. Uh, it comes at the end of the first episode, and it's now the template of everything that's going to go forward. It's mm. going to spring out of the tensions that exist within this particular scene. There's an awful lot to kind of get across, and these sort of group scenes are perfect for uh, for doing for accomplishing that, but they're, they're, they're tough to write. And so when, you, you know, when you've got like an ex exceptional cast like this and exceptional directors who can infuse all that with a sense of awkwardness and tension you're mm. sort of watching it more as a thriller and not just like an info dump i also want to kind of uh, give a little focus on Gronya keenan here who's who's fiona who actually given she's one of the leads in 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 this series doesn't have an enormous amount to do in this scene other than like evoke an incredible amount of repressed tension and anxiety and she just does it so spectacularly every time the camera cuts to her she's doing something extraordinary <laughs> just even that <sighs> yeah is she um yeah. so you know and so i feel like this is one of those scenes where everyone's having to you know there's not a huge amount of high drama to play it's all quite understated or quite naturalistic and everybody's just putting in it like that like putting in a real star turn and again, like so, it's like everybody firing in all cylinders here, from your cast to your 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 DOP to your to your um, every member of crew to the editor to the composer. Uh, it's it's one of those scenes where you feel like yeah, you feel like everything's come together in a yeah. really good way, and that's the that's the thing about uh, the whole process of drama. So many things have got to go right mm. for it to be right. So very lovely. So, 